This is One on One. We're pleased to welcome uh, to the campus that he knows well, Brian Kennedy, head men's basketball coach right here at NJIT. Good to see you, Coach. Great to see you too, Steve. Thank you for having me. You have a fascinating background. You're born and raised where? Uh, born in Trenton, New Jersey, raised in uh, Rumson, New Jersey. Coached where before you got here? Uh, I was coached uh, most recently at DePaul University in Chicago, Illinois. But wait a minute, you spent some time on Wall Street. Yes, I How'd did. How'd that happen? <laughs> um, uh, everything is, is six degrees of separation, so uh, I had recruited a player by the name of Rashawn Berno out of St. Anthony's High School here in New Jersey. Right. Um, his legal guardian at the time, Steve Gladstone, had uh, uh, given me an opportunity to go work with his firm, which included uh, Mark Bavaro and Phil McConkey, two great giant That's right. players. And uh, we had a small little uh, uh, institutional equity trading firm. That's how it happens. That's how it happens. So I, we talked to the president here, Dr. Bloom, a lot about uh, student athletes about the connection between academics and sports. Delicate balance, how do you see it? Um, most certainly, I think here at NJIT, it's academics first and then athletics. And uh, you know, sometimes in the uh, big college model of big time sports, sometimes that gets lost, but it's not lost here at NJIT. Uh, academics come first and how foremost. How do you make sure that happens? Um, I, by recruiting. Um, by getting out there and making sure that you recruit a student athlete who's got his priorities straight, who wants to come and get a degree at NJIT uh, before any of the basketball. So it's interesting, Coach. You know who doesn't belong here. Yes. I hate to put it that way, <clears throat> but there are other programs, <clears throat> excuse me, in this area, and we know who the, what programs they are because they've been highly publicized, where a kid who comes to that school goes to that school. It doesn't appear as if academics were that young person's top priority. You can pick it up. Yes, that, for sure. And uh, I, I don't know if you've seen Steve, uh, but there's been over 700 Division I transfers um, um, out there this year. Talk about that. Um, I think kids now, like you said, they're going to school for the wrong reasons. Maybe they're going for basketball, it doesn't work out, this, that, and the other thing. Uh, when the kids come here to NJIT, a kid like Damon Lynn and Tim Coleman have had such great success on the court. Yeah, talk about those kids so people can understand who they are. Um, Damon Lynn, who's going to be a senior for us this year, who's been an AP All-American uh, for the last two years out of Union Catholic High School uh, in New Jersey here. He's had a phenomenal year. He's had. Believe it or not, he's had one of the all-time great college basketball careers uh, out there. He's, he's going to be close to breaking the NCAA uh, three-point shooting record for field goals made, uh, which is just an unbelievable stat. Um, he's going to be leave here as the all-time leading scorer, over 2,000 points, and just a great, great, you know, great ambassador for NJIT. But he came here as a student, though. Had a 3-6 last semester. So um, Tim Coleman uh, from St. Anthony's High School. Jersey City. Jersey City. Played for Coach Hurley. Played for the fame Coach Hurley. Um, he played with a bunch of higher, you know, recruited, higher um, uh, thought of players maybe. Um, he's had the best college career out of all of his teammates. He's going to leave here as uh, NJIT scoring over. He's already scored over 1,000 points. Does, does it make it harder for you, Brian, when in fact you're out there recruiting you're recruiting for this institution. You know how important academics is. This is not a piece of cake, academically. And so for some really talented kids who are not into academics, they, they don't want to participate. Here's my point. Your pool is smaller. Yes, but we have a great product to sell. And if I think we're successful on the court because we're successful off the court. There's a common denominator with the kids that we recruit in the sense that they need discipline, time management skills, and they have a competitiveness to do well in the classroom. And I think that, that you know, my belief is that that carries over onto the court. So they're coachable, they're smart, and they want to win. And uh, I really do think that common denominator of the academic background really helps us. So talk about that. Clearly, you want to win. NJIT has had a history of winning, right? It's competed. Yes. Right? They beat St. John's, if I'm not mistaken, in a big game not too long ago. We beat St. John's last year, and the previous year we beat Michigan, uh, which, was a, which was really a national story. Um, so, yes, we've had a lot of success on the court the last two so years. So here's the deal. How do you define success other than having a quote-unquote winning record, which, let's not kid ourselves, does matter? 
you don't come out here to lose, but it's a question of what you will do to win and, and what you won't do. How do you define success when a young man leaves this program? Um, success would be he's graduating with his degree and he's moving on to whether it's in his field of study, whether he's going on for his graduate degree, whether he's going on for his doctorate degree, which one of our players is, is doing this year, Wynn Willis from Baltimore, Maryland. He's in a new business data sciences program here at NJIT for his doctorate degree. Those really are the keys to success for us. And as the basketball gets better, some of our players will have opportunity to play professionally. Uh, but at some point in time, the air is going to come out of the basketball and they have their NJIT degree. And what I, what I promote within the program is, is a family atmosphere. They'll, we, it's our job, it's my job, to help them get their foot in the door to start the rest of their lives. What do you love about coaching? Um, I love the kids. It's, to me, I love being around young kids. Um, I love the fact that they're um, molding them, helping them grow from kids into young men. That's really what I love about it. Leadership. How much of what you do as a coach, beyond the X's and O's, the execution of plays, setting up a defense, a zone, one-on-one, -on -one, whatever it is, you know, how much of what you teach I teach leadership right here at NJIT, so I'm curious. How much of what you teach is leadership? Um, most of what we teach is leadership. The X's and O's and all that is a small part of what we do. It's the everyday, um, you know, it's, it's the everyday teaching, going to class, doing the right thing, sitting in front of class. Um, you know, being, whether you like it or not, you're not a normal student. Everybody knows you because you're a, a basketball player. So uh, you have to hold your standards up even a little bit higher. Um, you have to be present. You have to be available to your classmates. How about leadership on the court? Describe it. Um, to me, leadership on the court is, is someone who, um, when things don't go right, it's how you respond. And that's, that's my whole motto for the kids. And that you worry about the things you can control and how you respond to adversity. And whether you're going to put your head down and go crawl in the corner. Or blame someone. Or blame somebody else. Or whether you're going to stand up and take responsibility and move on to the next chore at hand and tackle it successfully. Wouldn't it be great if we had that in a president? <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean in NGIT. I mean, never mind. Uh, I mean in the country. Yeah. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to get you into that, Brian. Brian Kennedy is the head men's basketball coach at uh, the New Jersey Institute of Technology. And the team is the NGIT Highlanders, right? Correct. And uh, playing what conference? The Atlantic Sun Conference. Okay. And by the way, that's fascinating because there are no other teams in no other teams in this area in that conference, right? Correct. Correct. It's a uh, it's a mostly a southern based conference, uh, but it's a terrific conference, one that we're you know so happy to be involved with, and uh, we we think we bring a lot to the conference with our our, our northeast exposure and and so forth. So. Style of play. Style of play. Yes. Is definitely different. Good luck, Coach. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for having me, Steve. Stay with us. We'll be right back right after this from NJIT. Thank you, Coach. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this special edition of One on One with Steve Adubato at NJIT has been provided by TD Bank. PSE&G, RWJ, Barnabas Health, The Fidelco Group, The North Ward Center, Prudential Financial's Global Communications Department, and by Verizon. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. One-on-one -on -one with Steve Adubato at NJIT has been produced in cooperation with Fios One News.